Well, hello. Uh, not that anyone's here, but I will go ahead and get started. Maybe we'll join, maybe not, but at least there'll be a recording for you. Although we have covered everything from the material and lectures that I had intended to cover. And really, it's up to you now to answer questions, but I have no questions from anyone because no one's here, and that's going to make it difficult, but be that as it may. Uh, I will have some current events questions probably on the exam, so be sure you have been keeping up with what's going on in government, both in the state and in the nation, because we are in Texas, and we are as we know, since we've studied what federalism is, we're also in the United States of America. So whereas uh, whether we're in U.S. government or Texas government, the two are intertwined. Uh, so if there's something big in Texas news, it would possibly pick be here on uh, the course uh, test. Uh, same way with the federal government. And goodness knows there's a heck of a lot going on. Uh, it's important to keep up with the news. The news is politics, mostly about politics. Oh, it's about car wrecks and things of that nature. Uh, but since this is a government class, you should know what's going on with the government also, along with the uh, uh, information on how government works, which is what we do in here. But it's also important to know what is happening in government right now so that you can take the information you have about how government works and apply it to what in the heck it's doing for you or to you right now. And you want to hope that it's doing positive things for you. But then again, is it? Uh, depends on your political cup of tea, I would imagine. But be that as it may, here we are, and we're going to be talking about, we well, we have talked about elections and parties. Uh, we've talked about uh, general elections. We've talked about the, uh, 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 how we elect members of Congress, how we have uh, local elections as well. We've talked about the, uh, uh, the uh, process of electing a president and we've talked about the Electoral College. We've talked about uh, elections in general, as in the general election. Uh, we know that the House of Representatives, the entire House of Representatives is up for election every two years. And then, uh, it, it, and that means every two years we're voting here in Texas for our uh, delegates to go to the United States House of Representatives, because all of them that are in the U.S. Congress from Texas are up for election every two years. But it's the same for the Texas legislature. The Texas legislature, the House of Representatives in Texas, serves a two-year term of office. So the entire House of Representatives in Texas is up for election, as is your local Texas state representative. Uh, Texas senators serve a four-year term of office in the Texas Senate, so they're up for election. Half of them are up for election every other two-year cycle. The uh, 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 election cycle runs on a two-year basis because of all of this. Uh, and U.S. senators, well, we have two U.S. senators from Texas just like if we were living in Louisiana or Michigan or New York or California, you have uh, two U.S. senators going to Congress from your home state. They serve a six-year term of office. So a member uh, will come up every uh, six-year period uh, from the U.S. Senate. The... Uh, Anyway, but that's not something that we need to address right now. But 
I wonder if that's one of you messaging me. Because no, 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 and no. Uh, by the way, the Federal Reserve has raised interest rates by three quarters of a point for the fourth straight time. Uh, the reason they're doing that is to fight inflation. Uh, the problem with that is it costs you more money and me more money to borrow money. And that presents a problem for the economy as well. Gee, Willikers, you mean the government's involved with the economy? Well, yeah, both in the national scheme and in the state scheme. Uh, Texas, by the way, does not have a state income tax. We're one of the few states in the nation that doesn't have a state income tax, which is good for us in that regard. Uh, but we still pay federal income taxes. So that's another reason to be aware of what's going on in government and who's getting elected and how much money is being spent. You might even say, why are we spending money on those guys in uh, the Ukraine? Uh, and sending millions of dollars in, in, in foreign aid to them to fight the Ruskies. Well, that's why we're doing it. Because if they're fighting the Russians, that is protecting our interests as well, because Russia wants to take over the Ukraine, which has been a, a part of their country in the past, but it ain't now. It ain't now. So it's important to recognize that what goes on in Washington affects your pocketbook and your future. Uh, and indeed, indeed, uh, Russia is a threat because one thing that Russia has been talking about in the news, which hopefully you're following because we'll talk about some, maybe have some questions on current events. One of the things that uh, Mr. Putin, the Russian president has talked about is using tactical nuclear weapons in Ukraine. Now, that is a threat not only to the Ukrainians, but all of Western Europe. We are in the North Atlantic Treaty Organization with Western Europe. What does that mean? If Russia attacks the Ukraine and radioactive fallout falls on Western Europe, that is considered an attack, a nuclear attack against NATO, which we're a part of, and we may be at war with Russia. And if they use nuclear weapons and are using tactical nuclear weapons, and if we say uh, we're not going to put up with this, we're sending forces directly from NATO and the United States into Ukraine, then we're in the middle of a battle. And if they use nuclear weapons against us, will we use nuclear weapons against them? And one of the things about studying uh, international relations in terms of our nuclear policy, we have had a uh, policy of mutually assured destruction in throughout our history of nuclear weapons. In other words, if Russia formerly the old Soviet Union, launched an attack on us, we would in turn launch a counterattack of equal strength. And if they've destroyed Houston, by the way, we are sitting in a ground zero, meaning that there are all sorts of missiles pointed at us because of our refineries and our port. So be aware of the thought of a nuclear war breaking out over Ukraine, simply because if it happens, bye-bye Houston, bye-bye you and me. Is that going to happen? Oh, I hope not. I certainly hope not. I have books to read. Uh, but I've been fascinated about this since I was a kid, simply because I grew up in the Cold War. Not something you think about very often, because we have not had the kind of threat in a long time. Uh, 
particularly with the breakup of the Soviet Union. But Russia, under Putin particularly now, um, is, is a threat, is a threat. And if he's been threatening to use nuclear weapons, and if that happens, we're in a whole new ball game. And Katie, bar the door and find a place to dig and dig deep because get the hell out of Houston before it gets hit. Find some place in the middle of the country that you can stay and hide for the next many, many years. Anyway, that's an aside. But that's why you study this stuff, simply because you need to be following what goes on for your own safety, well-being, and future. And that means also studying stuff about elections, because who gets elected decides on whether you get uh, better schools, if you get financial aid for your education, if you get forgiveness of your student loans, which has been happening recently. Um, and the Republicans are saying, we're not going to do that anymore. If we get control, we're not going to be forgiving student loans. You know, uh, we, we, we want people to not get federal money for student loans. We're Republicans. We believe you should pay for it yourself and the government shouldn't spend it because we don't want to pay any taxes. Republicans don't like paying taxes. Now, I don't like paying taxes, but I also know that we pay taxes for what reason? So you can get good schools, so that you can get student loans, so that you can get money for the poor, money for those in need, money for Social Security. Uh, you are going to get old one day. And the Republicans have been talking about doing away with Social Security, which means when you get older, unless you've gotten rich over time, how are you going to pay for being old when you can't work as much or work at all? That's why we have Medicare. That's why we have retirement funds through uh, our, our, our uh, uh, Social Security. So government... And all the things that we do in terms of electing people to office for the Congress and for presidents make a difference. And did you go vote, by the way? If you, uh, as you know, we're in an election. Uh, we are in the early days of the election. The early voting is going on. My wife and I went and voted uh, this morning. And uh, yeah. If there are polls open, we go and vote every time simply because it makes a difference. I mean, oh, well, I'm just, it's just two votes. What difference does that make? Well, if I'm sitting on my butt not doing anything and my neighbor sits on their butts and doesn't go vote, uh, then the people who show up to vote are going to vote maybe exactly the opposite of what me and my neighbors will vote. And that means that I'm living by what they have decided in their votes for office and the people they put in office. Because oh, there are a lot of people that are voting for people I wouldn't vote for if I were on fire or if they were on fire. But that's politics. You have your beliefs. I have my beliefs and we have what we think is right, you do make decisions when you vote and pick a candidate and know what's going on. If you don't know what's going on, uh, if you're ignorant, ignorance is not bliss. <laughs> Sitting on your hands and letting other people make decisions for you is not a good thing. So... That's why you get involved in politics. That's why you need to learn about this stuff. Not just because, well, i got to have a grade. Well, yeah, you have to have a grade. That's what we're here for. But the end result is making decisions that make a difference for you, your family, your future. Because that's what elections are all about. So we have talked about elections We've talked about general elections. We've talked about state elections. We've talked about federal elections. We've talked about the presidential elections. We've talked about the electoral college. Uh, we've talked about how people 
uh, actually vote. I mean, you and I vote for a president, a presidential candidate, but our vote does not determine necessarily. It's not our vote doesn't isn't the end of the process. What happens is we elect select electors based on how the state voted to participate in what's called the Electoral College, which then meets afterward to vote. The delegates to the Electoral College are selected based on how people voted in the state. And then they vote in the Electoral College vote, which is the actual vote that elects a president. Uh, this is a complicated and seems unnecessary process, but it is a way of giving a step-by-step -step process that enables the, uh, the, the states to have the essential say, as opposed to uh, groups of people in the state. So essentially a state is deciding we in Texas are voting this way and we elect electors who then vote, our state's vote on who won the electoral college votes. Oh my goodness, so much. But hey, you've read all your notes, haven't you? You've read everything I posted, haven't you? And you've read your assignments, haven't you? Well, my goodness, if you haven't, you got work to do because we're now starting our testing. And if you haven't read, if you haven't studied, you got a lot of work to do. I can talk to you today or you can go study. I think it's time for you to go study because if you haven't, uh, me talking is not going to help you. Not unless you lay groundwork. Reading your assignments is crucial for you making a good grade. I will lecture. I will help. You can write me anytime if you don't understand something. I will help you. But I will help you. I can't spoon feed you. I can't make it happen for you. Um, so if you want a good grade, hit the book, your electronic book, your online book. Uh, take notes on your reading. And remember, when you take your exam, it's open notes. It's open book. I mean, you can go to the book, but it's better if you've read it and made notes and you have an understanding. But you can go to the book. It just takes time. And if you haven't read it, then you're looking for something that's like a needle in a haystack. But if you've read it and studied and made notes, it ain't a needle in the haystack. You know where it is. And you can go look it up if you need to. Same way with the lecture notes that I have. I hope you've printed them out and that you have studied them and read through them and made notes on them, highlighted it. You can use them. The only thing you can't do is work together. I don't care if you use your notes, your book. It's open book, open notes, open internet even. I'm letting you search up answers. In other words, you need to find the information. And the more you learn how to look up things on the internet, the more you're able to research information at any time in the rest of your life. And effective internet searching skills are crucial for not only academic work, but work when you're doing work for your employer, effort uh, uh, projects for your employer. Uh, or if you're going on to a graduate school, you might want to go to law school. You may be going to medical school. You're going to be doing a lot of research. You're going to be doing a lot of work. So knowing how to use the internet and being more proficient at it is important. By the way, I have documents on how to improve your internet searching skills. And if you ever want that, let me know and I'll, I'll, I'll print something out and send it to you. All right. Uh, as I said, we, we covered everything the other day that I really wanted to cover, and I really wanted this session to be us getting together to ask questions. And like I say, I don't have anyone here. So if you got any questions, write me.
I'll answer them individually, one at a time. But, uh, hey, if I'm not going to, at, at, at 4.05, the meeting starts. Uh, it starts at 4, but I, I let it start at 4.05 so everybody can be there and then have a few minutes and boom, we start up. But uh, uh, if, if, please show up. Please show up. You know when we have the meetings? Be there. Be there. I, I, I will miss seeing you if you're not. Uh, okay. Well, stay in touch. Let me know. Uh, and if you've got any questions, I'll help you. Take care. Bye.